Hello, and welcome to our video on how to properly and safely upgrade the processor, also known as a CPU or central processing unit, inside your computer. We will be covering a typical generic desktop computer. If you wish to upgrade the processor in a laptop, you'll want to follow the assembly instructions provided by the manufacturer of the particular laptop. To determine which CPUs are compatible with your motherboard, it's a good idea to check the motherboard manufacturer's website. If you know the model number, you can look it up on a list like this one on the ASUS website. Then through that model, you can find a list of compatible CPUs. Note the model numbers or stepping numbers after the brand name and subbrand. The features among all processors of a particular brand may vary, as can the motherboards and socket types that they will work with, so it's important to be more specific than just saying, for example, Intel Core i3. Pentium is probably the worst offender. Pentiums of various forms have been kicking around since 1993. Before working inside the PC, it's critical to turn it off and disconnect the power. Flipping the hard power switch on the power supply will interrupt any current from coming into the computer, but your hand might slip and turn it back on, so it's safest to disconnect the cord entirely. It's also a good idea, after disconnection, to press and hold the soft power button down for a few seconds so that we drain the capacitors. Think of capacitors as buckets of water with little holes in the bottom, except that they're holding electricity instead of water. Next, we want to open the case. Typically, the case has a cover on one of its sides that is designed to be easily removed. If you're lucky, your case cover may just have some screws that you can loosen with your fingers. Failing that, you'll need to find a screwdriver. With the case open, this is a good time to talk about electrostatic discharge. Even static shocks that you can't actually feel can damage the delicate components that you'll find inside a computer. Damage caused by electrostatic discharge is invisible and permanent. To help prevent electrostatic discharge, wear an anti-static bracelet and attach the grounding clip to the frame of your computer case. Also, avoid working on carpet if you can, especially during the winter. Typically, the CPU sits under its own cooling fan. Some cooling fans, like the one you see here, can be removed without tools. Now we use the lever to release the CPU, and we can pick it up and set it aside, and then we can insert the new one. Remember, the shiny bits connect to the shiny bits. Also mind the notches along the sides. The CPU only goes in one way. If the lever won't close, it's sitting the wrong way. Either the top of the CPU itself or the metal plate on the cooler should have a thin layer of thermal paste. A very thin layer will do. Applying too much paste will make the cooling less effective. Now we'll put the cooler back on top of the CPU. We might actually want to leave the case off for this tentative test. That's fine, but whatever you do, don't touch anything inside the computer while it's running, unless you also want to learn how to replace a power supply. Reconnect the power and turn the computer on. Observe the CPU cooling fan and make sure it starts spinning right away. If the CPU is not adequately cooled, it could overheat and become permanently damaged. While it's booting, you can press a key, such as delete, it depends on your BIOS, to get into your BIOS setup and take a look at the CPU temperature. You can check the CPU documentation for recommended temperature guidelines. While I'm showing you where to go in BIOS, I'll tell you a computer joke. How many computer programmers does it take to screw in a light bulb? I'll give you a second. The answer is none. It's a hardware problem. When we're done with the BIOS, we can exit, and the computer will reboot. Once you're in Windows, you can check out msinfo32.exe and see your new processor. Have fun!